Hello, in this video I'll be mirroring a video by CD Productions which um, was uh, taken down from YouTube as far as I understand and which is also available on this platform yeah and uh, you can see here the first video episode one in fact the first episode the second episode was taken down so by this video I'll just be simply mirroring the video of uh, uh, CD Productions CDs Disclosure Project Episode 2 so this is it enjoy in Greece thousands are protesting against mandatory vaccination and this was after they announced immune only venues for the fully vaccinated so if you're fully vaccinated, you can go to restaurants without your mask, you can go to theaters, you could go to cinemas, concerts, right? So what's happening here is that they're starting in Greece and then slowly they'll be coming to the US with the same protocol. Again, from the website conspiracypost.com, White House says users should be banned from all social media platforms for spreading misinformation. Uh, providing uh, for, for Facebook or other platforms to measure and publicly share the impact of misinformation on their platform uh, and the audience it's reaching. Uh, also with the public, with all of you, um, to create robust enforcement strategies that bridge their properties and provide transparency about rules. You shouldn't be banned from one platform and not others uh, if you are for uh, uh, providing misinformation out there. You should be banned if you're providing misinformation out there. Misinformation, misinformation, providing, misin providing, mis uh, uh, providing, mis uh, if you are for uh, uh, providing misinformation, be banned from one platform and not others. Uh, if you are for uh, transparency about rules, you shouldn't be banned from one platform and not others. Uh so this is how they began controlling the internet, right? It starts from the top. Listen to this clone, Biden claim that these people, these misinfo agents, are killing people. According to the president, according to Biden, I'm not saying it. What's your message to platforms like Facebook? They're killing people. I mean, it really, they really, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. Are we in the this is the fear mongering. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. Are we in the <laughs> they're killing people. Wow. Wow. So the Guardian reports majority of COVID misinformation came from 12 people, reports finds, and they actually list the 12 people. So you have Joseph Mercola. So they're asking Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to ban his account. Second person is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Third one is Ty Charlene Bollinger. Fourth one is Sherry Tenpenny. Fifth one is Riza Islam. I think he got, I think he got removed from YouTube, but they're not showing YouTube here, so I guess they have been already removed from YouTube. All these people have been removed from YouTube already, apparently. Then we have Rashid Buttar, and apparently he's still active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but on YouTube, most likely gone. Erin Elizabeth. And so this is how they point the finger, right? And start to say, hey, get these people out of here. They're not speaking the mainstream media narrative. We need them out. We have this guy here, Sayer G. He was removed from Twitter, Instagram, partially removed. Who else do we have? 
Kelly Brogan removed from Facebook. Wow. Christiani Northrup, they want her gone. Ben Tapper, they want him gone. And we're not just talking videos. You can, it's not just about videos. We're talking about memes. We're talking about graphics, right? Like this, like this. Anything like this is considered misinformation. All right? Also, do we have Kevin Jenkins? And that takes me to Trump suing Twitter, Google, and Facebook, alleging censorship. Again, this is the former president who has been deplatformed. So if he can be deplatformed, what chance do you have? Anyhow, let's move on. This is quite alarming. The unvaccinated will not be allowed in Canada. We will continue to do everything we can to reopen safely and rapidly. But you did mention, you know, wondering when unvaccinated tourists can start coming to Canada. I can tell you right now that's not going to happen for quite a while. Uh, we need to continue to ensure that the safety of Canadians, of all the sacrifices that so many people have made over the past many, many months, are not for nothing. That we recognize the work that has been done by extraordinary partnerships across orders of government, by uh, community organizations and leaders, and by ordinary Canadians being there for each other, there for your neighbors, there for the elderly, there for your young, young people. These are the things that got us through this pandemic, and we are not going to jeopardize that by moving too quickly. We will move responsibly forward. We will continue the reopening of our borders, but we will do it in a way that ensures the ongoing safety of all Canadians. Again, Canada is starting that policy, and you're going to see that policy continue to spread. That's just, that's just the reality. Unvaccinated will not be allowed in Canada. Okay, fine. No problem. And so what's the next step, you know, talk about a mark of the beast and stuff like that. Well, they have a digestible microchip that you can swallow and use as a means of authentication. And so that microchip could be a vaccine passport. That may be the next step. Including authentication in just your daily habits. So I take a vitamin every morning. What if I could take vitamin authentication? What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Mm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> so this... You guys see it? This pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When you swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte, as do. and they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay? Okay, but... Okay, so wait. So it's, uh, it's really true. So what this means is that that becomes my first superpower. I really want this superpower. It means that my arms are like wires, my hands are like alligator clips when I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower. Like, I want that. So, so we're not shipping that right away. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're not shipping that right but, away. But it but sounds is it, like... Is it, this is FDA cleared? So here's the thing. This... This is not science fiction. This pill was actually made by a company called Proteus, and they've developed it for medical applications. That pill has been CE stamped and cleared by the FDA. You can take 30 of those per day for the rest of your life. And then what happens? Does your heart Nothing. beat change? Does your... <laughs> we can just tell that you've you... taken the pill. I mean, the medical app. Yeah. The medical application. Does Google now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because, let's face it. Here, 
Can we, we like just, you guys, but you're from Google. Just give him some water and let him take so, that. So oh, I, right now. Thanks. Maybe, maybe Danish. Danish, let me ask you. Does Larry make you take one of these? <laughs> Optional. So, so we optional. Uh, so we actually have demoed this working and authenticating a phone. Yeah. If you're in the medical industry, perhaps allegedly, you may take this authentication microchip to enter certain rooms, enter certain buildings. This microchip again as a means of authentication. Okay. So, um, something to watch out for. Again, this is on conspiracypost.com. Check it out. Let's move on. <clears throat> Talk quickly about the people that are already vaccinated. The people that are already vaccinated, they should be able to travel, right? Wrong. And that's kind of strange to me. I would think if you're vaccinated, you should be you should be um okay for travel but apparently um those that are vaccinated have some i don't want to say what but um some complications and so it's suggested that they don't travel um very bizarre thing is happening with these birds hundreds of birds are appearing uh disoriented dying and um, some of them are even having some type of discharge. Um, hundreds of birds across the eastern United States have been dying from a mysterious illness and wildlife experts aren't sure what is causing it. All right, Aaron, thank you. Officials in Northern Virginia and D.C. are continuing to issue warnings about sick and dying birds that have been seen across the area. A surprising number were exhibiting strange symptoms such as crusty eyes or shaking heads. Now the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Center is asking you to help submit any reports. Joining us now with more on this is ecologist Brian Evans. Brian, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jeanette. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So, so we mentioned it there. These birds are, are found visibly sick with strange symptoms, if not dead already. It sounds bizarre. What's going on? Yeah, so the symptoms that the birds are experiencing are uh, often blindness with crusty eyes and disorientation or shaking. Uh, they might not be able to stand. And this, is, this has impacted literally hundreds of birds and killed a lot of birds in our area. Mm. Is this, um, I'm trying to get some perspective here, is this unprecedented? Like how does it compare to anything else we've seen in terms of a large number of birds uh, mysteriously dying? Certainly over the last at least decade, this is very unprecedented mm. in, our, in our region. And what are the species of birds? There's several species of birds that are impacted. The ones most impacted are blue jay, uh, European starling, American robin, and common grackle. But actually, it's, it's affected a lot of mm. different species of birds in our area, which is really concerning. And yeah. it's also affected both juvenile and adult birds, but most of the birds, maybe nine out of 10 of the birds appear to be juveniles that are in fact, uh, affected. And I know we've seen this in our area, but this is happening in other parts of the country as well. It sure is, yeah. So we, we first saw this in our area, but we're seeing it um, hard hit from, from uh, Delaware to Ohio. Mm. And it's, it seems like it may be expanding into Indiana and other areas as well. Uh, with isolated cases that are that are well outside of that region. And when did this start? When did you guys start to notice that something was off? We started to notice in May, uh, though the first few cases do appear to have come in much earlier, probably uh, April or even March. Hmm. I, I know experts are trying to pin down exactly what's causing this. I saw some theories about a possible uh, connection to brood X, a cicada emergence. Anything to that? Yeah, well, it, it, that was certainly one of our early ideas, one of the early sort of uh, hypotheses that we were testing. We had uh, really hoped that it was the cicadas because the cicadas come along once every 17 years, so we know that it wouldn't have likely a long-term long effect on mm. the populations. So um, it does appear that the extent that the area spatially that, that uh, this mortality event is occurring is wider than that of mm. brood 10 though. Gotcha, okay, let's talk about ways that folks can help. There are two ways. I, I wanna begin with the most simple one, if you have a bird feeder. 
Yeah, if you have a bird feeder right now, we don't know what's causing this. This is fully a mystery, so you have to take your bird feeder down. We ask everybody to take your bird feeder down and your bird bath down. We always ask folks to clean their bird feeders and baths regularly, but right now that's not enough. We have to make sure we take it down. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Brian, because I did see some earlier reports about uh, experts asking people to clean them out, but you're, you're going even further than that. Yeah, until we get further word from USGS, we do ask everybody to take them down. Gotcha. And then lastly, experts are asking for essentially a relying on citizen science. What exactly is that and how does that help? Yeah, this is a huge moment for citizen science, for the public to play a great role in, in submitting data so we can get a better understanding of what's going on. And what that means is uh, observing the birds that are around you, having your family and friends observe the birds around you and look for sick and dead birds. And when you find that, report it. This is gonna tell us the, the spatial extent of this mortality event. It's gonna tell us the timing and how many birds are infected. Mm. Because until that, that point happens, we really won't know. Yeah, absolutely. It is quite the mystery. Uh, we'll make sure to keep tabs on this as well. Thank you so much, uh, Brian Evans, for giving us your time and insight this morning. Hope you enjoyed this. Yeah. Bye bye.